Okay, so today uh, in this third session, uh, we are going to extend the Dirac's uh, bracket notation and formalism uh, for representing the states and uh, the gates or operators uh, to multipartite state. So, so far we have been uh, working on how to deal with the single qubits and operators on single qubits. But today uh, we are going to uh, work out the formalism uh, quickly of how to extend that formalism to multi qubits. So the technical term in uh, physics uh, books is multi partite state, but maybe we'll be using just multi qubit word for that. Uh, most of our uh, focus today would be on uh, two qubits, but hopefully the formalism would be clear enough that uh, you will know that how to extend it to, uh, you know, three, four, five, or more than a uh, few qubits. So in that sense, uh, uh, today is sort of uh, the day that we really start doing something uh, uh, more concrete because uh, we would like to be able to work with a quantum computer that definitely has more than one qubit. <clears throat> the, especially the part where we can do operations, not only individually on different qubits, but also those gates uh, and operations that uh, work on combined states uh, of qubits, or if the qubits are in separate states that can result uh, in a state where uh, both qubits are maybe more than two qubits, uh, they are part of one single state. Uh, and one of the possibilities of those joint states is uh, uh, what we call entangled states. So by the end of uh, this lecture, uh, we will uh, also study uh, a simple circuit uh, that can be used uh, uh, for communication uh, of quantum mechanical states. For example, how do you transfer a qubit state from one uh, place to another place using classical information transmission? Uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, sort of one thing that is used in uh, operating quantum computers a lot. I have already sent. Uh, the Jupyter notebook that we will be using today at the end of the lecture because it contains uh, uh, quite a few of the commands and circuits that we will be studying. So if you have not already downloaded, please download it from uh, Google Classroom. And when I will be working, you can open it uh, on your computers and uh, you can just, you know, uh, at least execute the commands and see how they are written. And perhaps you can play with them uh, uh, to learn different other commands. So uh, today also I will be using a simulator to simulate uh, uh, those quantum circuits in the notebook. But from uh, the next class on uh, Wednesday, uh, I will uh, show how you, you, how you can use the cloud quantum computer uh, of IBM. So please uh, do make your account uh, in IBM's uh, uh, quantum computer at IBM Q. Uh, and I will uh, explain in the next week how you can you know sort of link the notebook on your computer by copying a token from there uh, from that account to that notebook and how when you run your uh, notebook on your laptop how the information automatically gets transmitted to IBM's quantum computer and the results are transported automatically back to your notebook so you essentially work on your laptop but basically you are running your circuit uh, uh, on the IBM's uh, backend quantum computer. Okay, so with this uh, sort of uh, uh, initial things, let's uh, begin the extension to multi part uh, partite states. For that, let me share my screen. So hopefully, it doesn't crash today. Uh, I was actually thinking of sharing uh, the notes with you and uh, for today's lecture, uh, instead of sharing the notes from this journal uh, uh, app, uh, I will actually uh, scan the actual handwritten notes that I have with me and I will send that PDF to you because this uh, uh, journal is, uh, you know, it's something that sometimes it crashes, but also my, my handwriting is actually not really that legible on it uh, because it's something new that I'm uh, trying to get familiar in terms of writing. So I will send out all the uh, notes that have uh, uh, a couple of derivation in them uh, to you by uh, after making them PDF after the class. So it's up to you if you want to take down notes, but if you do, 
that can be really helpful for you uh, if you want to do that. All right, so uh, let's begin uh, this uh, lecture. And this is sort of the last lecture in terms of uh, introduction that I will now uh, develop extension of uh, Dirac's bracket notation to uh, multipartite state. And uh, with that, uh, we will have all the basic uh, uh, framework that we will need to analyze uh, more complicated algorithms uh, from the next week. Okay, so yesterday, or maybe in the last two days, we have been uh, developing the Dirac's bracket notation that we can represent the states of a single qubit in terms of uh, a basis. So one of the bases is zero one, which we call a computational basis or a Z basis. You can also represent the same state in terms of, let's say another basis, we might call this Z plus minus basis, let's say the numbers or weights of these spaces, some uh, D and C and so on. And you can construct actually many other uh, bases as you want. Uh, the number of possible bases is actually infinite, but these two are the most, so you know, common ones. Uh, this Z basis, zero one, and the X basis plus minus. And we also learned that uh, we can make uh, inner product of states. So when we have to make an inner product, we first construct a bra vector corresponding to the cat vector. And the rule for making the bra vector is taking the conjugate transpose that if I use uh, this representation, I first uh, uh, take a star and then the uh, star of zero and its transpose turns it into a bra zero and then B star and one. So this zero and one are related to zero one cats like this. So zero one bra is equal to conjugate transpose of zero cat. So which is uh, zero is this one zero. So it's conjugate transpose would be trans uh, conjugate of one and conjugate of zero, but since they are both real numbers, and then the transpose is still left. So one, zero, and now only transpose. And when I take transpose, this becomes a row vector. So this zero bra is this one, zero. Similarly, this one bra is zero, one. So once we have these bra vectors, we can uh, find, let's say, the inner product of this bra psi with cat psi like this, that uh, uh, if you, you know, have this, a zero zero plus b zero one and then a zero plus b one and this zero into zero is one and a into a star is a mod square zero into one is zero because they're both orthogonal so this is gone b this one into zero is zero so this is gone and b star into b is b modulus square and one into one is one. And this you see is just a number. So the inner product gives us a number and our normalization requires us that this uh, magnitude square of this state psi should always be one. So that this A square, which is the probability of getting your state uh, in zero state and probability of finding your state in one state, the sum of both these probabilities should be one. So we learned this inner product. And then we also learned outer product, which is very convenient to write uh, uh, operators or gates uh, in matrix form. So let's say this one and this zero. So this outer product is just uh, you know matrix product in, in real sense. So since this is a column vector, let's say zero one, and then this is the row vector, uh, in this case one zero, and we use the matrix product rule. So this row gets multiplied with this column zero, this zero multiplies with the zero, one with one and one with zero. So this outer product gives us this matrix. So uh, we can, we discuss other outer products as well, which means that at the end, we can write any single qubit gate 
as some sort of you know uh, superposition of outer products of these types okay so with some weight a i j so we can write any single qubit gate uh, in terms of these outer products or you can just write it as a single matrix as well uh, if you want okay so all of this is applicable to a system where we have only one single qubit so this qubit is nothing but a two level system so i usually represent a qubit with this thing just you know uh, to show its equivalence to a spin system which has uh, like two levels but physically it could be anything so we have only this one qubit now how do we have a formalism if we have let's say more than one qubit let's say there is this qubit there is this qubit and maybe there is this qubit so we have a b c and so on qubits so people have uh, uh, developed the formalism for these multi qubit representations as well and this is called uh, a multi partite uh, uh, formalism and uh, this is like this so this multi partite uh, formalism for representing these qubits is this that you have the state of one qubit let's say psi sub a and then we put this circle with a cross and we call it tensor so this tensor product of uh, let's say uh, some state psi 2 of this p qubit and then tensor of some state psi 3 of c qubit so what does this say this says that uh, the state of qubit a is psi 1, the state of qubit B is psi 2, the state of qubit C is psi 3. So in general, this psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 could be different. For example, if I write something like this, so this tells me that this qubit A is in zero state, that it is in this ground state, this qubit B is in the excited state, and this qubit C is in some superposition state of one and two because it's a plus state and uh, in this formalism it doesn't really matter where you uh, write this thing for example if i write this thing like this that one b zero a star plus c this is still the same thing even though i have written this b first and a later and c uh, after that it doesn't matter this is still the same representation of the state because this subscript tells us that this state belongs to which qubit. So if you are willing to write these subscripts, you can write them anywhere you want. But since uh, uh, people uh, you know, always want to save ink uh, and time by, writing, uh, by not writing as many things as they can avoid. So what people do that once every party you know, understands that a qubit will come first and b qubit will come later and then c so what they do they simply write this okay now there's an explicit uh, implicit assumption that this is the state of a this is the state of b and this is the state of c qubit so if somebody now writes this this will not be the same as this upper state because when I haven't written any uh, subscript, it means the first will always be the state of qubit A. So this here, it said that qubit A is in zero state. Here it says that qubit A is in one state. So if we, and that's what we are also going to do. We will have an implicit assumption that whatever our qubit numbering is, if our quantum computer, let's say has uh, six qubits, uh, eight qubits. So let's say this is my zeroth qubit, first qubit, second qubit, third, fourth, five, six, seven. So generally, whatever is the state uh, on one side, it is this is zeroth qubit, this is first qubit, this is second qubit, and so on. Or some people actually uh, prefer it on the other way that they say this is the zeroth qubit, this is the first qubit, this is the second qubit, and so on. But whatever the uh, you know this convention, once it is decided, nobody writes this subscript. Okay, so now we know how to uh, represent uh, these Dirac states. Actually, people are even lazier. So 
they don't even write this tensor symbol. So they would just write this thing. So the tensor is missing. Okay, this this thing. So if this tensor is missing, this is still the tensor product. Actually, you can even be lazier than that. And that's what we are also going to do. You can just write this. So this means that this zero is the state of this qubit, one is the state of this qubit, plus is the state of this qubit. But this, what it really means is actually this, that this is some, uh, let's say zeroth qubit. This is the state of the first qubit, and this is the state of second qubit. So when you see this, it actually means this. All right, so now we uh, have developed a convention to represent uh, states of different qubits. Let's see how we can uh, construct a matrix uh, representation. So the rule is this. So let me do it for bipartite system. And then I will explain how you can do it for multipartite. So for example, if I have one qubit in state A and the other qubit in state B, the matrix representation is this. So let's say this A state is some A1, A2, and so this B state is some B1, B2 in some uh, basis. For example, this A might be, you know, A1, 0, A2, 1, and this B is B1, 0, plus B2, 1. So they both have to be in the same basis. That's the condition when, uh, what I'm going to do next with them. So once we decide a basis, we, die, we uh, can write these states in these uh, uh, column vectors. Now, the joint column vector can be obtained for this state like this. You take this A1 and multiply with both of them one by one. So A1 into B1, then A1 into B2, then take the next one, A2 into B1, and then A2 into B2. So this four by one column vector now represents the joint state of this uh, two qubit system. So as an example, let's say I have one qubit in state zero and the other qubit in state one, which as you know, I can also write this like this. So when I have written this zero one in this cat form, this really means this zero tensor one. Anyway, so this zero has a representation one zero and this one has a representation zero one. So a four by one vector corresponding to this is one into zero is zero. 1 into 1 is 1, 0 into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0. So this 0, 1, 0, 0 vector represents this 0, 1 state. Similarly, this 1, 0 state can be represented by 0, 0, 1, 0. And you can similarly check that 0 into 0 state, which means 0, 0, this is 0, 1, Star just to work out one more example. So zero into zero, zero, zero into one, zero, one into zero, zero, one into one, one. And this one, one has a four by one vector notation, one, zero, zero. Now you see, we have a nice, you know, system that uh, our one, one state is this, this is zero, zero state, and similarly, this is one, zero. And uh, if I, so this is zero, one. So this is zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Is, it means that since they have only one element non-zero at one of the places, at different places, there are a couple of things that we can note right away. So number one is that all of these states are orthogonal. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one one are orthogonal or perpendicular. Okay, that if I multiply this one with this, I'll get zero. You can check. For example, if I multiply this zero zero with uh, let's say one zero, which means that I'm going to take inner product with one zero state. So this one zero bra is the complex conjugate and transpose of this uh, one zero cat. So I multiply it with zero, zero state, zero, zero state is zero, 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 one. Now this 
its uh, transpose would be 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. And if we multiply this row with this column, we get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equal to 0. So the inner product is 0. It means that they're both perpendicular. And you can check for any combination. And also, all of these have magnitude 1. If you take its inner product with itself, we will get only 1. So it means that this set 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, it forms a basis. That any uh, bipartite state can be written as a superposition of these two states. For example, if I take an example, if I have a bipartite state 1 over square root 3, 1, 1, 1, 0, I can represent it as you can see clearly see this this is one so one one is there and this is one so this is for zero one so zero one and this third one is for So zero one and the third one is for one zero plus one zero. So you see this general this state has been written as a superposition of this uh, these states. So this is a basis. And similarly, you can easily check that uh, this set is also a basis. I leave it as an exercise for you. And I hope that uh, you know understand that this plus minus, for example, this means this, this, that the first qubit is in plus state and the second qubit is in minus state. And if you want to find its uh, 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 where its matrix representation, this plus state is one over under root two, one, one, and this minus state is one over under two. So this becomes square one minus one, so one over two, so this becomes one into one, one, one into minus one, minus one, one into one, one, one into minus one, minus one. So this is the vector for this state. Similarly, you can obtain the uh, four by one column vector for the other, and you can check that they satisfy all the properties of a basis. So any question about uh, these bipartite states? Sorry. So if not, let's see how you can go to more uh, states. So if you have, let's say, uh, tripartite state, some one, two, three, this can also be proceeded in the same way. Tensor B1, B2, tensor C1, C2, that you first, let's say, work out these one. So this A1, A2 is here, and this gives B1, C1, B1, C2, B2, C1, B2, C2. Now, the next step is this, that you multiply this A1 with all four of these, and you have like these four numbers, and then you multiply this A2 with all four of these, and then you have four more numbers. So this is like an eight by one matrix. So this way uh, we can construct these matrices uh, uh, for you know arbitrary uh, qubit states. All right. So next, let's now see how we can represent multi-qubit gates. So for that, I will today just concentrate on two qubit gates because that's what we usually care about most uh, in our quantum computers. Uh, but uh, uh, later on in the course, we will talk about more than two qubit gates as well. So two qubit gates are the gates that operate on two qubits. And let's start with the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, important uh, two qubit gate, and that is what we call C naught or the controlled naught gate. So this has this property. 
this gate. That if let's say there are two input states, let me call them some X and Y. On the output, we want a situation like this, that if one, this, this uh, qubit that we call, let's say control qubit, and if this is zero, whatever the other qubit is, the second qubit, it goes to the output as it is. And of course, this is control qubit, this goes on the output as it is always. So if control is zero and this Y is zero, we should get uh, control zero and Y at the out, this output also zero. Let's call this some Z and this is still X. And if this control is zero and this Y qubit is in one state, it should remain in one state. However, if this control qubit is in one state and the Y qubit is in zero state, you just flip it. So control is still one, but this zero goes to one. And if control is in one state and this target qubit Y is one, now this gets flipped again and it becomes zero. So it means if your X qubit and Y qubits are like this, the output is like this, that X always goes to the output, but for Y, it becomes something else. Let's call it Z and it flips if the control is one and it doesn't flip if the control is Z. So that's why it's called a control NOR gate. This is a sort of, you know, uh, uh, if you talk, think classically that depending on uh, this, you know, uh, qubit, you apply an X gate on this one. But uh, instead of this symbol that perhaps seems more appropriate, this gate has this symbol that plus sign. And the reason is this actually, uh, this output Z is nothing but a modulo to sum of X and Y. Uh, as you can see, if this is zero, so let's say if X is zero, this zero plus zero is zero. If X is zero, zero plus one is one. If X is one, then one plus zero is one. If X is one and Y is one, one plus one is zero. So one plus one is two, but modulo two addition gives us zero back. So that's why this plus symbol is used instead of this, uh, you know, uh, symbol of dot with X, because this plus is more uh, meaningful in a way that it, it represents this gate. So this gate, let me draw it here again. So this uh, solid dot over here shows that this is a control uh, qubit. And then this plus is a symbol for modulo two addition. So this input X goes to output as it is. And the target input Y becomes a modulo two addition of X and Y. Okay, so let me give actually one more example of this application. Suppose that uh, our X is uh, something, let's say one, and our Y is plus state, that it is zero plus one. So what would happen? So if this X is one, so it means this Y will have an inversion. So if I now apply a control S gate on Y, this will become one over square root two. The zero will go to one and the one will go to zero. So similarly, if X is zero, the output would remain just like that. Let's now see the, uh, is there any question? Uh, yes, sir. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask uh, physically it's applied such that first it measure uh, control state and then ba based on that measurement it applies some specific frequency as we already discussed to change the state or when or as it applied uh, uh, to change on x 
or it... uh, thank you very much i think this is a very important question so the measurement doesn't take place because if you measure x this x is going to collapse and it's it's not going to remain x after that so you see what we are saying whatever is x is it should come at the output but if we measure x we can destroy it so that's why we don't measure so uh, physically it's implemented in such a manner that this state does not you know get infected for example you know you can uh, uh, see something like uh, uh imagine a circle like this for example if we have uh, let's say uh, two two level things sitting like this so we know that let's say if one qubit is represented by this uh, two levels of an atom and let's say your other uh, qubit is uh, some photons state so uh, when photon you know uh, comes here and if this is uh, uh, you know sort of in the excited state it can because of stimulated emission it can go down but this photon will you know continue like this and if this uh, you know photon doesn't exist this and wherever it is it will remain there and if this is in the lower state this can go up this this can get excited so similarly it is implemented uh, uh, in uh, uh, in superconducting qubits in such a way that they couple uh, two microwave cavities with each other and then a frequency is inputted from one side and depending on the state of the uh, resonance in one cavity the other cavity is either excited or not so the key is that you uh, do an operation on this state depending on this state but without measuring it because when we measure quantum mechanically the state can be destroyed uh, sir i want to ask uh mm -hmm. is is that uh, by this mechanism can we predict uh, the state of control control qubit without measuring it uh because uh no we, we can have... no we can because uh we will see that uh what is actually what this gate does that this entangles both of these qubits so after uh, at the output even if you measure just this uh, you know uh uh, this uh, this qubit the other qubit is going to be affected uh, sure sir. thank you thank you okay let's see how we can now represent our uh, operator in uh, dirac's bracket notation so this control x operator we can quickly see can be represented by this Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Sure. Uh, you just elaborated that what would happen if we uh, if we take y in uh, in any other basis, for example, plus basis. So it's basically the inversion of the uh, of the uh, weights. Right. So I I was asking I was trying to ask that if the control bit uh, control qubit is in some other base, for example, if it's in x basis or y basis, then what would happen? Logically, what would happen? Okay, so I'm just going to come to that thing. Uh, thank you very much for this question. So I'll show for a more complicated control uh, bit that what it does to the uh, target bit. Okay, thank you. Okay. So you see this operator, now I can write it uh, the, using Dirac's language very quickly like this, because what, what is telling me, so this is telling me that this zero one state is being shifted to one one state and that's what it does because this one is the control bit this zero is the target bit so one zero shifts to one one so i can add a term this one 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 zero to my operator this one one is shift uh, is turned into one zero and this zero one is not disturbed because if the input is zero one it remains zero one if the input is zero zero it remains zero zero so this uh, Dirac's language gives us you know a quick way of describing it you can uh, actually check that in matrix form this can be written like this. So this is essentially this is identity. This part, this is block identity, and this is you know that x gate, and this is zero. This is zero. But you can check it by uh, implementing it on you know different states one by one. For example, if you multiply this matrix with the the zero zero state is uh, uh, one zero zero zero. So if you multiply this, you will get one zero zero back. So if you uh want to see that how it operates on 
let's say a zero one state. So you can multiply this matrix with this and see that you still get this pair. So similarly, you can check that this matrix is, uh, you know, really what uh, uh, it does. Uh, if this is what uh, it, it should do according to this table that we built. And using this table, we can quickly uh, write uh, it like this, but not only this, you can, if you know this, you know, matrix table, uh, it, this matrix form of the operator, you can go back here as well. Because if I, if I work out this outer product of zero, 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 you will see that this is nothing but one zero 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 zero. This zero one zero one outer product is nothing but zero everywhere except one here, and this one zero one one is nothing but a matrix of all zeros except a one here. And similarly, this so uh, this represents a matrix with one here. So by combining all these four, I can write this matrix form. Uh, but for, uh, fortunately, we will not be needing, you know, uh, too much of uh, either this operator or this matrix to work with. Most of the time, just this, you know, uh, logic of control X would be sufficient for us to work uh, with this gate and how it does, what it does in the, uh, you know, uh, circuits. Okay. so. Let's now see another example. Let's say uh, our uh, control bit is in some superposition state. Let's say our X is this, okay? And our Y is suppose this. So how does the control X gate work on this case? So I can write it like this, one over under two. Let's first combine both of these. So if I multiply this zero with this thing, I get zero, zero, one, zero. So one over square root two. And now this control X operation, when it will work on this, this will uh, go like this. The first one is the control bit, the next is target. So control is zero. So it means target remains zero. So this one zero will now, however, convert it to this one, one, because this control is one and target is zero. So because of control one, zero goes to one. Now you see uh, our output is now written like this. And unfortunately, uh, we can't do anything about this state uh, after this, because that's you know sort of the final state. I cannot write it more uh, simplistically. But suppose that uh, uh, our input state is something like this, okay? Let's say, so this is another example now. Our input state is something zero, one plus one zero. So this is a giant uh, state of two qubits. So if we want to see what this control X does to this, we can see that this would be, this is zero one. So control is zero, target is one. So nothing will happen to it. So this is one zero, control is one. So target will be flipped. So this is one one. But now I can take one from the right side common and this can be written as one over square root two, zero plus one, answer one. And this state is nothing but the plus state. So plus answer one. So this psi state of two qubits after passing through control X has been converted into this product state. So Madhya, uh, does this answer your question? Uh, yes, sir, pretty much. Just a single uh, other small thing to clarify. Um, mm -hmm. In the previous example, uh, when you gave the final answer in which the control bit was from uh, uh, from Z basis, the final answer uh, the final answer you have written can be written as a four cross one matrix by simplifying the tensor product. Correct. Right. Yes. Right. Thank you so much. Th th that was just for my clarification. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so there's another uh, control gate. Let's uh, say it's called control Z gate. This is a simple gate. So we can express it like this, that if your control 
bit is one, operate this Z gate on your target and give an output here. So this is uh, Z X if your control bit is one. And this is again X if control bit is Z. So depending on the control, we will decide if the Z is going to be applied or not. So this gate, for example, if your input is zero, zero, you should get zero, zero because this control is still zero. So if control is zero and target is one, you should still get zero, one. But if your control is no one, but target is zero, and the Z gate, let me just, uh, you know, write it here. Z gate is a phase gate, so it doesn't do anything to zero and adds minus one to uh, minus sign to one gate. So this one zero still goes to one because the Z gate doesn't do anything to Z zero even though we are applying no. Now, when the control is one and the target is one, this will go to minus one, one. And there's one funny thing about this. So since we just added a minus sign to this state, even if this other one was a control bit, uh, uh, if you interchange the role that you make this control and this target, you will still get the same this output. Because when this is control the and this is target, only this one one state will be converted to minus one one. So, most people actually have another symbol devised for this control Z gate that since this is the case, this, that this is equal to this one, people simply use this symbol. That there are just two these control dots over here. So this, since this is a symmetric gate that you can use any one as a control and the other one as a target. Okay, so I leave it to you to derive the operator form of this one. So it's very easy, zero, zero goes to zero, 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 one, two, zero, one, one, zero, two, one, one, and this one is with minus sign. So you can construct the matrix and the operator form. The notes that I will send you has uh, both the Dirac's uh, operator form and the uh, matrix form for this. All right, so, Let's now discuss perhaps one of the key issue today, entanglement. Now we have, you know, uh, been able to understand how to represent multi qubits. We can now start discussing a few things. So this is, I'm going to start with, you know, sort of uh, uh, the physics and then we will get to the circuit. So entanglement is, uh, you know, uh, sort of a concept which says that when you have two particles, okay? And they don't have a, a separate state of their own, but they share a common state. Like there is some, you know, state and they're part of that state. So then we would say that these two systems or two particles or two qubits are entangled, which means that if I disturb one, for example, I try to measure its state, I will disturb the other as well, because the, when I try to measure this state, uh, state of this qubit, this is going to collapse to either zero or one. So since this is going to be disturbed, which means that the overall uh, state of the system is going to collapse to make this to zero and one, and the other one will be disturbed as well. So how do we mathematically recognize that which state is uh, representing entangled and which state is not represented entangled? There's a very simple way uh, using Dirac's language. And that is, if you can write your uh, state of two particle as a product of state of two single uh, particles, then the system is not entangled. Because when I've written this, this clearly means that this tells me that particle A is in state psi one and particle B is in state psi two. And when I can use this language, okay, uh, this qubit is in this state and this qubit is in that state, it means they're not entangled. They, they both have their own state. So if I do anything to this, it's not going to affect anything to this. And similarly, if I do something to this, it's not going to affect this. But if we cannot write our 
state of the system as a product of two state. Then we say that this is a state that represents entangled qubits. Let me give an example. For example, if I have a, a state like this, one over square root three, zero, 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 one, one, one. So now this, you can do whatever you want, but you will never be able to write it into anything tensor into any single thing. Okay. So this is, this represents an entangled state. But on the other hand, if I have a state like this, let's say it's zero, zero plus plus zero, one. So this, you know, I can easily separate into two states. So I can take the zero common on the left side and this zero and one can be kept here. And if I combine this one over square root two with this thing, this becomes zero into plus. So I have been able to write this combined state of the two qubits as a product of this qubit state and the part and the second qubit state. So this means that this is not an entangled state, but this is because I cannot write. You can actually uh, set up a general framework uh, that can uh, tell you quickly, depending on the weights of, uh, you know, coefficients of these 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and the 1, 0 state, that if the state is entangled or not. But for our sake, uh, this, this should suffice. Okay, so entanglement can be of different degrees. When you can separate the states of two qubits, we can say that they have an entanglement of zero. But uh, for example, there is this state that I have written. This is actually not the maximally, uh, you know, entangled state. The, the set of maximally entangled states for two qubits is this. And let's say, let me label them 0, 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1. So this one, and then there's another state. Let's call it 1, 0. And then there is another state, 0, 1. Let's call it, this is uh, 0, 1 plus one zero and then the fourth state let's call it one one zero one minus one zero so these four states they are maximally entangled and uh, uh, actually to to prove that they are maximally entangled we will have to go to density matrix formalism that actually deals uh, with mixed states and pure states uh, we are not going to go there uh, in this course. So you'll have to take my words for this. And these are also called Bell states after the scientist Bell who developed uh, a mechanism of working on the entanglements uh, for different uh, systems. And uh, as you can see, uh, perhaps uh, quickly, that they also form an orthonormal set. The magnitude of each of these state is one. You can check that if I take its inner product with itself, I'll get one. And if I take the inner product of any of one uh, Bell state with the, any uh, the other uh, Bell state, I'll get a zero. So for example, this psi zero zero dot product with psi, let's say one zero, this will be zero. So similarly, the product of psi zero zero with all other three is zero. Uh, you can check it yourself. All you have to remember uh, is this part. That's zero 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 one is zero and zero zero one zero is zero and so on. So the orthonormality of the 
computational basis states that we already uh, study. So they can also form another basis. We call it actually Bell basis. And uh, just as you know, uh, sort of a, another thing for you to worry about, we can actually have another basis, which is not that commonly used, but uh, sometime it is used. These states actually are also uh, form a, a basis set for two particle system where this plus plus means plus of this and plus of the second state and so on. Okay, so now we have, uh, you know, sort of uh, an idea of what we call uh, entanglement and what are the entangled states. Let's uh, ask this question. How can we, you know, prepare these bell states, these maximally entangled states? So for that, let me give the circuit and the circuit is a very simple one. That you have, let's say, two qubits in computational basis ij, which are unentangled, and you apply a Hadamard gate to the first qubit, and then a control not gate to the second qubit. At the end, the state that you will get will be uh, entangled state. And let's work out. For example, your i is zero state and your j is also zero state. Let's see what happens. When this zero goes through this Hadamard gate, this will become one over square root two, zero plus one. And this zero will be as it is. Now, when we apply uh, a C CX gate on this, Let's see what will happen. But before that, let me rewrite it like this. This zero will be multiplied with both states. So zero into zero plus one into zero. Now, if I multiply, if I operate CX gate, this will, this state will transform to like this. This control bit is zero. So target, nothing happens to target. So this remains zero, zero. So this control bit is one. So target is flipped. So one zero state becomes one one. And this is nothing but our bell state that we labeled zero zero. So now you see that why I have these labels. So the zero zero bell state can be prepared using this circuit and initializing the qubits in the zero zero state. Similarly, if you start with zero one, that the i is in zero state and j qubit is in one state, you will see that after passing through Hadamard and control x gate, the output would become zero one label bell state. So this will be obtained after passing through that circuit and so on. So it means that this circuit gives, uh, this circuit can transform from the computational basis to the bell basis, so to speak. Or on the other hand, you can say that this circuit can entangle different states. So uh, let's see how to unentangle, uh, how to unentangle the states, which means that how do you know we find that if a given state is an entangled state or not, like sort of you know, or equivalently, this is called measurement in bell basis. So for example, if you have a general state psi and you want to measure uh, its uh, sort of degree of entanglement, or at least if you want to see that uh, if there is a bell state hidden somewhere here or not. For example, uh, a state like this that I made here. So this is a state that is not a bell state, but uh, it is it is also not an 
product of uh, two states. So it means it has some degree of entanglement in itself. So how do we do that? For that, we can measure, we can do a certain measurement. And that measurement actually is just the opposite of the Bell circuit. So it goes like this, that you first apply the C naught gate and then apply a header mark gate. So this is just the reverse of the Bell circuit. So what it will do, if your input state in general is, you know, some combination of your uh, Bell states, which definitely it is because Bell states form a basis. So it means I can write any state, entangled or not, it doesn't matter. I can write any state as a superposition of these Bell states. So once uh, we have this superposition, it means when this state passes through this circuit, this size zero zero part will be transformed to zero zero. This size zero one state will be transformed to zero one state. And this psi one zero state will be transformed to one zero state. And this one one psi one one state will be transformed to one one state. And now once it passes through this and I uh, make a measurement over here, By the way, I use, use these two lines for classical information because once I have measured, I know the uh, state of the state, it is either zero or one. So if I do a lot of measurement, let's say a, a thousand of times on this state psi, what I can do is I can prepare an histogram and let's say how many times did I measure zero state? How many times did I measure one state? How many time I measure one zero state? or how many time I measured one one state. So now suppose at the output, I only get zero zero state. I never get zero one one zero one one state. It means at the input, my state was purely a bell state with size zero zero. Similarly, if I measure only B, it means that uh, uh, at the input, my state was, uh, you know, uh, this size zero one and so on. But if I measure A and B equally, and I don't measure C and D at all. So it means at the input, I had uh, an equal superposition of size 0, 0 and size 0, 1. Does it mean that states were entangled or not? Let's see. If we add size 0, 1 and size 1, 0 state equally, if I add these two states equally, what would happen? This 1, 1 will cancel and only 0, 0 is left. It means if I measure A and B with equal magnitude, and it, it would mean that my state was not entangled and so on. So from this, you know, information, uh, uh, probability information on the measurements, we can see what the input state was. Okay, so any questions so far? Um, I'm sorry, sir, can you repeat the last part? How can we uh, judge by the weights of A, B, and C, A, B, C, D, that uh, whether they are uh, they were entangled or not. I didn't get that. Okay, so you get this point that we can represent any state psi as a superposition of psi 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, because yes. they form a basis. Okay, so it means that they have a certain weight. And once they pass through this circuit, uh, this inverse of Bell circuit, it means this circuit transform 0, 0 to 0, 0, psi 0, 0 to 0, 0 state, right? Yes, that's clear. So at the output, I will have this state in general. So when I measure uh, this state, I will, since I'm, I'm measuring in computational basis, I should be able to prepare this histogram that uh, how many times did I measure 0, 0 and 0, 1, et cetera. So now if I only get A, for example, my output was like this, and this is like 100% probability. So it means B, C, and D are zero. So now it can clearly tell me that the, at the input, there was only size zero, zero state present, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So similarly with other individual coefficients, but if I measure A and B equally, and I don't, uh, C and D are zero, this would mean that at the input, size zero, zero, and size zero, one was pre were present with equal amplitude, which means what? which means that psi zero one and okay so these are the two states so if they are uh, present at with equal amplitude this is nothing but a zero zero state 
right? Because if I add them, this plus and minus will cancel one, one, and this sum will give me something into zero, zero. So this is not right. entangled, right? So with this type of analysis, we are able to uh, see if the input state, you know, was entangled or not. But if I get A, B, C differently, they're not, by the way, if I get all A, B, C, D equal, this also means that the input state was not entangled because uh, uh, you can check by adding psi 0, 0, 0, 1, psi 1, 0, 1, 1 with equal amplitude that it's an unentangled state. But if we get A, B, C, D all with different values, it means it was entangled, uh, but not 100%. I mean, it was not a maximally entangled state. Okay, but this uh, th this whole histogram analysis is uh, now now the thing uh, moves from thematical analysis to actually practical analysis. Either right. we have to use a simulator or we have to use actual quantum computer to get the histogram and then analyze the results. We cannot do it mathematically, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh... I actually have uh, to discuss teleportation as well, but I think it would be best if I just uh, first uh, discuss the notebook that I have sent, at least uh, until the part where uh, uh, I have, you know, written the code for this entanglement and uh, uh, quickly, and then we'll see if we have time, we'll go to, to teleportation as well. Okay, so let me share my screen. We're able to see my screen, right? The, this uh, browser. Okay, I hope it works okay. Actually, yesterday I had prepared a much longer notebook, but somehow half of that uh, uh, had been deleted. And today I discovered what had happened. Uh, when I downloaded, I had downloaded in the middle. But anyway, uh, this, you know, has uh, more things in it. Actually, there's one more thing that now I realize I had to discuss, and that is how to represent your uh, states, uh, multi-qubit states uh, on the, how to visualize them. So previously, we know that uh, we can visualize states on the block sphere, okay? So if we have like two qubit, we can similarly say that I can represent those states on two block spheres, that one block sphere for qubit A, the other block sphere for qubit B. But this has a problem. I can represent unentangled states using block spheres simply because I can write states uh, uh, psi one tensor psi two. So psi one will be represented here, psi two here, so no problem. But what about the entangled state where I cannot represent them as a product state, which means that I cannot put a psi here and a psi here because there's no individual psi assigned to qubits. So for that, Kisket people have invented another technique of realizing uh, this multi-partite state. They call it Q-sphere. So Q-sphere works like this. So if you have, uh, let's say a state like this, one over under three, uh, zero, zero plus, uh, one zero plus one one. So what they do that they say, okay, uh, let's uh, uh, label this top pole of a sphere as the zero zero part and the bottom pole as the one one part and then the middle part as the uh, zero one part. So this would be, let's say zero one and this spot would be one zero. And what they do that if this state is present, like zero zero is present here, they will assign a big ball here, a big dot. And if the one zero is present, like, like here, they will put a big dot here. And if zero one is not present, so there's not going to be any dot. So this is its location. So if one zero state is not present, there's no dot. And since one one is present, there's going to be a dot. And if all the states have equal amplitude, as in this case, the size of these dots is going to be equal. But if let's say, uh, let's not worry about this normalization part. Let's say there are three here and uh, 
two here. So this would mean that this blob would be three times bigger than this one. And this would be like two times bigger than this one. But there can be, you know, a phase part as well. So there can be here something like iota 60 degrees. There can be like two uh, iota one zero or there can be minus one one. So in addition to these dots, they assign a color as well. And whenever they draw this Q sphere, they draw the color scheme over here. So red color is the zero degree. And as the color changes, so the color of these spots will tell you what was the phase uh, of this term. So terms are plotted uh, with the dots and the size of the dot is proportional to the relative amplitude in the state. And the color of the dot is proportional to the phase uh, of that term. So this is for, let's say, uh, two particle system. If you have three particle system, so zero, zero, zero is here, one, one, one at the bottom, and the state with ones, uh, with two zeros are here. So let's say zero, zero, one. So this is the position of one, zero, zero, and this is the position of zero, one, zero. And then they have another circle here. So this is a state with three points. So one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and one, zero, one. So the idea is that uh, highest number of zeros on the top and with the concentric circles, you keep going down uh, by increasing the number of ones. So the lowest state has all ones and the highest state has all zero. So if the corresponding dot is present, it means that state is present if there's no dot it's that state is absent and uh, the color and the size still tell us the relative amplitude and the phase. Uh, sir, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, if I have entangled um, two qubits, let's say that, that they are in entangled state and uh, I want to apply, let's say, poly X gate, will it apply to both uh, qubits that are entangled when I no, apply to? It will apply to individual. You can, okay. okay. So the trouble is this, that when you have uh, uh, these qubits, they can be entangled. So they will be disturbed when, to, when you try to measure them, because then you will have to collapse them to either zero or one, but you can uh, uh, perform operations on them individually without knowing their state. That is okay. Because you can imagine, okay, one qubit state is here. The other qubit state is here. So if I have to measure this one, I will have to collapse it like this or that. But uh, when I have to so perform an X gate, that operation is performed without knowing the state, that what is the state? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, are you opening, is, is this Jupyter screen open to your screen or is it freezes in my space? Uh, I have opened Jupyter. Can you see the Jupyter notebook or not? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have, uh, we, we can see. So my second question is, uh, if we apply poly X gate, let's say to uh, qubit to an entangled state, will it also be a uh, move to pi degree in Q sphere and that, that updated version of block sphere in one uh, pi degree in air uh, uh, relative to X axis? Okay, so you see these operators are defined by their corresponding uh, uh, Dirac operator form. So mathematically, they work exactly that way. That, uh, you know, visualization that we have di uh, discussed for, let's say, X rotates like that, that is, uh, strictly speaking, true only for independent qubits. For, you know, entangled states and qubits, you will have to go back to that math. Uh, and physically, they always correspond to a certain thing. For example, the X gate is that uh, uh, pi pulse that people call uh, with half of the time period and with frequency equal to the gap of the energy level. So physically, that is always going to be that. Okay, sir. Sure, thank you. Okay, uh, so here is. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm so I'm so sorry. So, uh, just to continue the question, uh, which my dear colleague uh, colleague asked, um, uh, I was thinking that the poly x gate is a two cross two matrix mathematically, and a two qubit entangled state is a four cross one system. So mathematically, a poly x gate is just a matrix multiplication of one qubit with uh, with the two cross two uh, matrix. So, uh, so the multiplication of entangled state and poly x gate is not possible. So, mathematically, um, uh, 
it uh, it's not making sense in my head that we can we can suppose uh, I, I get your point so let's say you are coming from here and your qubits are somewhere over here and there are two qubits and their joint state is a four by four and now we just want to see how we can let's say apply the x gate to one and not the other so the operator the joint operator corresponding to both of these can be written like this let's call this sum operator o so we symbolically write it like this i tensor x so this means if you want to read it off as it is that for one qubit its identity and for the other qubit its x operator and if you want to find its operator form this identity is 1001 and this x operator is 0011 and now i can construct the corresponding 4 by 4 matrix like this that i take this 1 into 0 1 1 0 so this would be 0 1 1 0 and this 0 into 0 1 1 0 so 0 0 0 0 so this 0 into the 0 all of them and this 1 would be 0 1 1 0 so this is the operator corresponding to which will be applied to both qubits at the same time but actually it will work like this so I hope this oh. clarifies your question. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, notebook again. So I'll only take a few more minutes, uh, uh, hopefully, with this notebook. So now you see in the first uh, part, I have, uh, I'm, I'm pressing shift, enter, and uh, I'm uh, from Qiskit, I'm importing quantum circuit, execute air, basic air. From visualization, we are importing histogram. So now, uh, in the next part, I'm importing this plot Q sphere, plot state Q sphere, and I'm also importing state vector that will be used uh, to represent state vectors. So I can construct. Uh, uh, they have provided this facility state vectors with just from just labels. For example, from from one one, it can construct a state vector SV corresponding to this one. And if you want to just see that what this SV is, this, let's first execute this one. Okay, so this is state one one. So it means on the Q sphere only, I will see one dot at the bottom and it's of red color, which means that this red color corresponds to zero degree phase. So let's see this SV is nothing but zero, 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 one stage. So that's how we have already worked. So this is, a column vector with 0, 0, 0, 001 uh, identities. Okay, now here I show just uh, another example circuit, okay, uh, just to show how uh, things are used. So from NumPy package, I'm importing the NumPy package as NP, and then I am building a quantum circuit with two qubits. And uh, again, qubits are labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on in Python. So index starts at zero. So I'm specifying that at qubit zero, apply header mark. Then I will usually be using this barrier command, which just, you know, helps in visualization and it does nothing. And then uh, you can apply this uh, rotation around Z axis. So for example, I'm defining this to be some angle theta and by theta by two, I'm applying some of this rotation. And then uh, here I have implemented the CX gate. This is the control not gate. And you can see the symbol is very simple CX. So one is my uh, control qubit and zero is my target qubit. As you can see here in the symbol, the X is applied on zero qubit. I'm just, you know, for the sake of just building a circuit, applying a rotation with Z and then I'm applying another CX gate. And then I have a barrier, another header mark over here and then I'm drawing the circuit. So it's working like this. I have deliberately not put any measurement here because uh, I want to introduce you to another command, which is called, which is the evolve command, which essentially does the mathematics. So I had the initial state SV, which is this one, one state. And then what I'm uh, asking Kisket to do is that evolve this SP state through this circuit QCOP, which is just uh, given above. And this, then I'm printing new state and I'm plotting the new state on the Q sphere. Just an example to show you. So this is a state that you can see is uh, 0 0.3 minus something and then minus something and this 
something and so on. So all the terms have different phases. So first of all, all the terms are present. So you see four uh, dots and all have the same magnitude. So you see all four dots of the same size, but their colors are different because their phases are different. So this is how uh, these uh, multipartite states are represented on Q-sphere. Okay, just uh, another example. Uh, you have a state vector, uh, SV state again, prepared from one, one. And now here I have shown uh, the circuit for entanglement. You see, I'm building a two qubits quantum circuit and I only have header mod and a control X gate. And then I'm introducing another option for you uh, for the drawing. It's, called, it's the abbreviation for matplotlib. So matplotlib is a library uh, in Python, matplotlib. So this is uh, something that is used to make uh, a more complicated plots. So if you want to draw the circuit, you know, a bit more beautifully, you can always use this MPL. If you don't use MPL, then your drawing is just you going to be simple text type. Okay, so I make this uh, entangling circuit. And now I'm going to evolve my one one state through this entangling circuit, which I'm label, which I have labeled my circuit. And let's see what the output state is. And as uh, I can see, the output state is uh, minus this thing and plus this thing. So uh, this corresponds to zero one and one zero state, right? Because the first one is zero, so this corresponds to zero zero. The last one is zero, which corresponds to one one. So this is uh, uh, half, uh, you know, fifty percent zero one and fifty percent one zero, and with a minus sign here. So this is exactly corresponding to uh, the psi one one state that we had uh, studied over there. Let me see if I can show that again. So psi one one. So after that, can you reiterate the the purpose of evolve command? So evolve simply uh, simulates through the circuit. I mean, instead of uh, uh, preparing the, you know, uh, instead of going through it, like when we do in measurement type with this, mm -hmm. we can uh, go through it just like we do on paper and, and see the end result. So why do you have to initialize it with some other, other entangled state? I didn't initialize with entangled state. I initialized with just one one. So this one one state is not entangled. So why do you have to give a uh, give a state? Uh, uh, what's this one one? What does this one one mean? One, one, I'm sorry, I'm new to Python. No, no problem. So this one one is the input for this Q not Q one. So okay. this, so if I make it to be let's say uh, zero one state or one zero, so now uh, my state will be evolved through this circuit for input one zero. So now my output is different because my input is now one zero. So okay, so you actually define the circuit and the input, and then you get the output. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So welcome. So so here we see this entangled state, and uh, uh, I can do it using measurements as well. Now this time I have put uh, uh, this measurements again, and just to show you. Uh, I have included a third qubit, which actually is not, uh, totally not needed, but just for the uh, purpose of showing that we can have uh, qubits uh, just lying in the circuit as well, but you know, uh, they won't do anything. And, and I also wanted to make another point that Python uh, and this Qiskit by default initializes all qubits to zero. So all qubits that are not you know, initialized to any other value, they're by default in initialized to zero. We can initialize to other states, but by default, they're initialized to zero. So this HCX is the entangling circuit and this, this Q2 is in zero state. And uh, now this is uh, sort of uh, the procedure for executing circuit on simulator. So you import air and execute, and then you set the uh, backend as cost simulator. I'm, this time I'm calling it simulator. Last time I called it backend, but this simulator and in the execute command, you specify your circuit and your simulator and the number of time that you want to run this circuit. So, and then uh, I'm getting results and from results, I'm getting counts and I'm plotting the counts. So, 
Okay, so here is the output. You see 50% is the 0, 0 state and 50% is 0, 1, 1 state. And when you interpret this histogram, the uh, qubit on the left, this 0, 0, 0, and this 0, 1, 1, this 0 corresponds to this Q2. And the next qubit corresponds to this one and then the next to Q0. So Q0 is written at the end and uh, Q3, Q2 is written uh, uh, on the left side. Okay, so the next one circuit is for teleportation that we will uh, most likely be studying next week now. So I have sent you this uh, notebook as well. You are welcome to play with the rest uh, of this uh, notebook, but uh, from the input 11, this deals with the teleportation circuit that we will now study in the next class. So is there any uh, question? But here you were uh, asking for, uh, for repetition of something. Uh, no, no, sir. You, you just uh, iterated it. Uh, I was just asking about the evolve command. You just told me. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I have a feeling that maybe for 75 minutes that we have scheduled, it's a little bit short, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll hopefully be able to do something useful in the next week. So any questions? Uh, any other questions? Sir, I have a question. Sure. Uh, sir, in quantum optics, we have beam splitter uh, like this. We in gates we have input zero or one. In in, in uh, beam splitter, we also have input zero or one. Can we relate these two things with? Because we can get the entangled states from the beam splitter, as we get the entangled states from the gates, or rest of the things like drawing uh, in Jupiter. Like in, can we do such uh, mathematics over there? Yes, we can. So people have actually been trying to build quantum computer using photons as well. The photon, there's only one big trouble with photon. It's very hard to interact with them. So they are very good at keeping their state. For example, you prepare them in a certain state and uh, they're traveling uh, through, let's say, free space or bouncing back from uh, mirrors and so on. They're able to keep their states uh, pretty good. But if you want to change their state, or uh, you know you want to measure their state that is something which is a bit tricky and also another very difficult part is to entangle photons with each other uh, you have to do it through some nonlinear process so there are you know practical issues but theoretically speaking we can definitely do that thank you sir you're welcome Any other questions? If not, let me stop the recording.